Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And uh, yesterday I had made a video on best position of Rahu Ketu. So many of you have asked me which is the worst position of Rahu Ketu. All right. So therefore, uh, today's video will be on the worst <laughs> or difficult placements for Rahu Ketu. Right. So now that's a fact of life. Everybody has difficult planets in the horoscope. I know you have them. That is why you're watching this video maybe because you have the fear that maybe my Rahu Ketu is having challenges. I have them, I know. Everybody has. You may know your friends, family members. Oh, look at his Rahu, look at her Rahu. It's so bad, right? It's so difficult. So therefore, <clears throat> uh, let's not shy away from admitting the fact that we have weaknesses, we have difficulties, we have challenges, we have struggles, okay? So therefore, uh, what I want you to understand is that we should learn the difficulties which come with every placement with, and with every planet so that we can master them. This modern uh, YouTube idea of that uh, every, you should not say negative things you know, when you are with a client and all this. This, uh, this works to some extent but uh, beyond a certain extent if you really want to help somebody you have to point out their weaknesses okay? and then you have to help them accordingly. Of course, you must be able to help them with uh, solutions and um, solutions to the uh, challenges. So just telling the weaknesses is not enough. Okay? So therefore, um, every house and every planet has some challenges. For example, let's talk of the 10th house. Many people, yesterday I told in uh, my video that uh, Rahu Ketu, uh, if they're conjunct the 10th lord, then it can be a very big Rajiv for career progress. Now, because Rahu gives results of the planets which is conjunct with, that's perfectly fine. But the same 10th house can ruin your marriage. Okay, So therefore, uh, similarly, the 4th house can give you things related to property. So, But uh, if you are planning to conceive, either you are a man or a woman, uh, or you are in that process of having children, it's difficult to conceive the fourth house because it's the denial, the twelfth from the fifth. Always I have seen that box right left. So therefore, when I mean to say that uh, the worst placement, the most challenging placements for Rahu Ketu, <clears throat> it is not only something very simplistic. Uh, oh, it's in sixth house, eighth house, twelfth house. You know, then oh, the, it's generally bad or something like this. Well, when we say bad, we have to be very specific. It depends. Uh, on which uh, you, you are asking good and bad for which area. That is very important. Okay? So, <clears throat> so if you are talking of childbirth, then as I said, uh, the, these three houses are not very good for childbirth. The, four, the Lagna, the fourth and the tenth. Why? Because uh, the second house, the fifth house and the eleventh house, these are the houses of family and uh, children and lineage expansion of the family and these three houses first fourth and tenth are the twelfth houses from the second fifth and eleventh so therefore if you talk from a perspective of childbirth uh, if you're a man and then um, if your Rahu Ketu Dasha is going on Antara Dasha or Mahadasha and your Rahu Ketu is uh, sitting in these houses or their dispositors are sitting in these houses or um, the dispositors are also ruling these houses, or, or they themselves are uh, you know, conjunct the lords of these houses, then they could be a bit challenging for uh, childbirth. So you may not be able to conceive. Uh, if you're a lady and if you're a man, you may, not, you may have low sperm count. That could happen. So that's from the perspective of childbirth. Okay. And then if you're talking of career, you know, for career, it's universal that the 8th house and the 12th house, they're the most challenging when it comes to career. So if you're Rahu Ketu, they're linked to the 8th or the 12th. Now, how they are linked, that I've explained yesterday. So I won't go over all the rules again and again and again. It makes things uh, very confusing and redundant. So if they are linked, so if you want to know, then please watch yesterday's video. Where, what do I mean when I say Rahu Ketu is linked? Okay, there are different rules to study Rahu Ketu. So if you have not watched, then please watch yesterday's video. Okay. So, 
so if they are linked with these three houses, six, eight, and twelfth, sixth house is an exception sometimes, but eighth and the twelfth, they are universally challenging for finances. Okay. So now if uh, the problem worsens, if this is in the nakshatra of a planet which is lording the 8th or the 12th or sitting in the 8th or the 12th. Okay? So I give the example of a ca cancer ascendant or oh, cancer. <laughs> Let's take some uh, different examples this time. Aries, Aries Lagna. Okay? So Aries Lagna, we have uh, Mangal, Mars as the Lagnesh and the 8th Lord. So, so suppose you have uh, Rahu in the 12th house in, Pi, in Pisces and um, yeah, so if he's, if he's in the 12th house, this is one example, okay, then that could be a challenging placement in the Bhav chart, of course. But suppose um, he's in the nakshatra of uh, Jupiter or Mars. Okay? So where are nakshatras of Jupiter and Mars for Aries Lagna? Jupiter rules um, Vishaka nakshatra, for example. So if Rahu, and, now, and where, where, where is Vishaka for uh, Aries Ascendant? It is in the junction of the 7th and the 8th, okay? So therefore, if, uh, if a person has Rahu Ketu in Vishaka Nakshatra, then this could be a bit challenging, okay? Even, even if it's in uh, Revati, it could be a bit challenging. Why? Because Mercury is the 6th lot, okay? And if, even if it is in Punarvasu, it could be a bit challenging. Why? Because Punarvasu is ruled by Jupiter, who is also the 12th law. So for finances, you could take them on the 6th, 8th, and the 12th. And for marriage, uh, these are the houses primarily. So if Rahu Ketu is linked with the 6th and the 10th, then that's really very bad for marriage. Okay. Why? Because um, these houses are the 12th from the 7th and the 11th. Okay. Now, this could be good for career, career progress and name, fame, power, position, authority. But if you're somebody looking to get married, you will not be able to finalize your marriage. Either of the, these problems will happen. Either you won't find somebody at all or you will find, but they won't be up to your expectations. Or they will be up to your expectations. You'll find them. But somehow you will feel that uh, it's not, uh, we are not compatible enough. So although they match my criteria, but I don't think we can stay together. Or you find you, you meet each other's expectations, you are compatible, you can stay together, or you can't get married because of some reason. <laughs> All right, so that is something which happens when the sixth and the tenth they are linked. Yeah. Or it is just that. You are in a relationship, but uh, the other person or you, either of you, you are not interested to uh, go to the next level and uh, get married. Okay. Or, or there is some physical separation. Physical separation means like you have to stay in a different city because of job. You know, the husband is here, the wife is here, or wherever. Okay. Or anything could happen. Okay physical separation or in worst case if there are malefics it could also mean fights quarrels discord you know, differences and all this uh, animosity you know, these things could happen <clears throat> so that's what uh, the, these are some of the placements and then if you are talking of travel so travel uh, the houses are the third and the twelfth houses and ninth primarily the third and twelfth so if Rahu Ketu is linked with the third house and the Dustanas, so if Rahu is conjunct um, Lord of the third house and the sixth or the eighth or the twelfth, primarily sixth or eighth, yeah, then this could be a bit troublesome because then what would happen is your visa might be rejected. Okay? You might apply, but no luck. Okay? So that's something which uh, happens if Rahu is linked with the third house along with the Lord of the Dustanas. Again, disclaimer, when I say related, please go and watch yesterday's video. Mm -hmm. They will know when I say related, what do I mean by that? And apart from that, what else is remaining? Childbirth, gone. Career, gone. Marriage, gone. Everything is gone. <laughs> and yes, for health, of course, if Rahu Ketu is linked to the Ascendant and the Lord of the Dustana, then it's very bad for health. But suppose Rahu is also linked with the, so suppose Rahu is sitting in the Ascendant and he's conjunct the Lord of the 5th and the 12th. Then what would happen is 
The fifth house shows cure and the twelfth house and the lagna can show diseases, expenses, uh, hospital, jail, all these things. Hospital is also like the jail, jail sometimes. <laughs> so in that case, you will have some problem, health problem. And then uh, because the fifth house is linked, you will recover from it. Okay, But they won't cancel out each other. They won't nullify each other. They will... Uh, they will give their results individually. So one will give you the negative effects, one will give you the positive effects. Okay. So it's the same with Dustanas. I mean, the 10th Lord and 11th Lord are also linked along with the Lords of the Dustanas with Rahu Ketu. Then you will have losses, but then you will regain them. Or if you get good things, you will also lose a lot of money. So it's either way around. Right? So this is how you know what is the worst placement for Rahu Ketu. So don't just say Rahu is bad in the sixth. Don't just say Rahu is bad in the fifth. Don't just say Ketu is bad in the ninth. Okay. So be specific. Rather than making such useless, uh, idiotic statements. Oh, Rahu is bad in the seventh. Rahu is good there. What? Rahu is bad there. Rahu, Rahu may be in the seventh, but what if it is in the Nakshatra of the eleventh uh, floor? Superb, fantastic. It's millions of times better to have Rahu in the seventh than to have the Dasha for benefit who is in the sixth. Okay. So, for example, if you have Venus in sixth and Rahu in seventh, so which Dasha is better for marriage? One thousand percent Rahu Dasha. Okay. Venus can ruin your marriage if Venus Dasha runs. So, don't think that benefits are always going to give you good good things. All right. <laughs> they will give you. Uh, provided they are well placed, but if they are not, then we should not denigrate uh, the malefics unnecessarily. Okay, because well, ultimately the predictions are given from the houses and not from uh, the nature of the planets. Okay, so for example, if uh, marriage happens in Rahu Dasha, if Rahu is in seven, it could happen with a foreigner. Okay, that could happen. Different caste, creed, community, religion. But uh, if Venus is in the seven, the person may be from your uh, same same community, same religion, something like this. Okay, the person could be uh, into you know arts, creativity, and all. So that's how you see. Not that oh, Venus is in sixth, but it's Venus. It's good after all, right? Rahu is in seventh. It's Rahu after all. It's bad. So not like this. All right. So always see the houses which are linked with Rahu Ketu. And I'm interested to know where your Rahu Ketu is and what are the challenges that you have faced during your Rahu Dasha. So please let me know in the comments. I'm very eager and enthusiastic to see the comments and read uh, and understand. So you could write down my Rahu is here, conjunct these, these planets or how which houses are my Rahu linked to. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.